Hello there, and welcome to Apple A Day. This is part one of my new course on learning Keynote. This episode is an introduction and a quick overview of Apple's Keynote software. We'll be covering the basics of the user interface. So Keynote is Apple's answer to PowerPoint. It's been around for over 20 years. It debuted in January of 2003. In its simplest form, it's just a slideshow application, but of course it goes way beyond that. You can create stunning presentations to captivate your audience, and you don't really have to start a presentation from scratch. Keynote also has a ton of built-in templates and themes which can be used as is or as a great starting point. And of course, your slides don't need to be static. You can easily animate the slides and slide elements. Every aspect of your presentation can be customized. Okay, let's take a look at the Keynote interface. When you launch Keynote, select the New Document option. You'll be presented with the Choose a Theme dialog. Now, you can't start without selecting a theme, and there's no blank theme option. So I'm just going to choose the gradient theme from the minimal category. It's one of the more basic themes that I like. A new Keynote document will be created with a single slide containing some placeholder text. Okay, so now let's take a walkthrough of the interface. So over on the left-hand side, you have what is called the Navigator panel. It displays all of the slides in your presentation. I'm just going to right click here and add a new slide and I'll do that a few times. And so you can see that it shows a thumbnail of each slide. And of course you can navigate from slide to slide simply by clicking on the desired slide or use the up down arrows to move between them. Now the reason you can't see the text in these thumbnails is because it's placeholder text. It's not actually on the slide. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to go to the third slide and double click to edit the text in the title. I'll type in Apple a day, and I'll add some points, introduction, interface, and toolbar. And now you can see that there's text in the slide thumbnail. You can also use this navigator panel to rearrange the order of your slides. Okay, so moving on to the toolbar, the first item is the view menu. It's initially set to navigator, which is what this panel is. If I select slide only, it will hide the navigator. The next option is the light table, which basically just shows an enlarged thumbnail version of each slide in a grid format. Now notice that the slides are all numbered in the order that they appear. So if I wanted to change the order and move slide three to the beginning, then that slide actually becomes slide number one now. And I can do that just by dragging the slide. And as I drag, the other slides are moved out of the way. You can rearrange the slides here or in the navigator view. The next option is the outline view, and this is pretty cool. It shows you each slide, but not as a thumbnail. It actually displays the text for each slide. You can also edit it from here. So I'll just add the word window in front of toolbar, and you'll see that it updates the slide instantly. Now the outline view has a lot more power than what I'm showing you here. Um, it allows you to move text around, not just the slides, and I will be covering that in a future video. Now there are other options under the view menu, but we're only interested right now in this first group as they're all about navigating and moving slides around. So I'm going to switch back to the standard navigator. The next option in the toolbar is a standard zoom control. With this, you can scale the view up and down, but for the most part, you're either going to view slides at 100% or use the fit slide option, which simply fits the slide into the current window size. The next toolbar item is the add slide option. When we added slides a minute ago, uh, I just used right click and selected new slide from the drop down menu. But using this add slide feature from the toolbar displays a drop down menu showing all of the different slide layouts available in the current theme. If you pick the wrong layout, not to worry, you can always change it later. The next toolbar item is the play button, and this, of course, lets you play your presentation. So moving on to the center, you have six toolbar items that let you add content to your slides. And if you've worked with Apple Pages or Numbers in the past, these will look familiar. Uh, from here, you can add tables, charts, a new text box, shapes, and in shapes, you can choose from quite a variety. All of these shapes are vector shapes, meaning that they can scale to any size without becoming pixelated. I'll just go to symbols, 
choose this refresh icon, scale it up, and you can see that it remains very smooth. That's the beauty of having vector images. And of course you have media, which lets you add photos or videos, etc. There's many options here. And then at the end, you have comments, which are notes to yourself. These don't display anywhere when the presentation is played. Notes are more about things you want to change during the creation of your presentation. And they also come in handy when you're creating a presentation with someone else, when you're collaborating. Now the notes can be applied to the full slide or to an element within the slide. I know I went over this section pretty quickly, uh, but this again is an introduction. I just want to cover it briefly and we will be deep diving into each one of these features in future videos. Next on the toolbar is the share icon and this lets you send your keynote presentation by email or airdrop. Uh, you can also collaborate with other keynote users here and you can invite them to work on this project. We'll be covering this later as well. Moving on, on the right you have three panels which are used in designing the look of your slides. You have format which lets you change the style of the selected item. Depending on the item type, whether it's text or image for example, these options will change. For text it lets me set the style, the colors, add a reflection, etc. Moving on to the text tab, this is pretty standard and from here you can change the font, the alignment, spacing and more. The Arrange tab lets you rearrange elements in their drawing order on the slide. Uh, you can also make changes to the position and the rotation angles of the elements. The advantage to making adjustments in this panel versus just using the mouse and dragging the elements around, this gives you the opportunity to be very precise and enter in exact values. Moving on to the Animate tab, it's here that you can add animations to your elements, dictating how they will appear on screen and how they are moved off screen. And we're going to be covering this in great detail in the future. Moving over to document settings, here you have control over some basic document properties. One of the big ones is to change the theme. Uh, for instance, I'll click on the change theme button and I'll choose basic black. And you can see that the background and the font and the text alignment and the styles have changed to the style settings used by this theme. I'll just change it back to gradient and you can see it all resets back to where it was. This can become very handy when you're not really sure what the end theme should be, but you just want to get started putting in all the content and then change the theme later on. There's also a variety of options on this panel, things like changing the size or making the presentation loop. And lastly, there's an audio tab. This lets you do a few things. You can add a soundtrack to your presentation. It also has a feature which allows you to record the audio. So that's pretty much it for the introduction. As you can see, Keynote on the surface is a very simple application to use. It's almost just as simple once you get into the details. This is a testament to the folks at Apple who have designed this application with simplicity in mind. In part two, getting started with presentations, we'll cover themes, templates, and manipulating and rearranging slides. Thanks as always for watching. I'm John Martins. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.